For the first time in 34 years of commentating on the Tour de France with Paul Schoen, he's not with me. Paul passed away in December. Paul was my wingman, my confidant, my analyst, and above all, my great friend. We lived the Tour de France together for over three decades. Paul came into the business at my invitation back in 1986. Paul was the life of the tour, be it with the riders, the organization, or the many TV networks. He always had a quip, a smile, and a word for everyone, usually in their native tongue. C'était le favorisme, alors il m'a choisi, on a fait un, un peu de route ensemble. Et depuis, il parle français comme quoi Vous l'avez connu, Yves comme coureur, à Colchard His sudden death in December reverberated around the world in stark disbelief. The man who gave the Tour de France a party atmosphere had left us. At his memorial service in Manchester in February, the Tour de France sent the most senior people, while others flew from Australia and America to say their final farewells. His journey had began in 1977 when he joined a French club in Paris. Here he impressed and he quickly earned his first pro contract for Fiat in 1978. He was a front runner and inspired many English speaking riders who became known as the Foreign Legion. Chosen for his ability and for the smile on his face when the going could not get much worse, he kept his teammates in high morale. His fluent French endeared him to his new public. He entertained them for 10 years, ending his career by winning the British Road Race Championship and riding the Tour seven times. He took to television and its nuances like a duck to water. You had sea and sun. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> his first comment was, this TV work is hard. I think I'd prefer to be a rider. Paul and I never spoke over one another. A squeeze of his knee from me or a finger in the air from him was a cue to change voices. The news coming over at the moment is he's alongside his team manager's car and he's holding his leg and it seems to me... He peaked early, calling the 1989 tour won by Greg LeMond by eight seconds perfectly. He was so good, I suggested he could never get any better and he should think of retirement. Oh yes, I was joking. We were now on the road to becoming the world's longest commentary duo in sport. Living in Kenya and finally in Uganda, Paul spoke Swahili fluently. He often shouted at the Kenyan spectators in their own language as the tour climbed up the famed Alp d'Huez. Their reaction just caused Paul to laugh and laugh. He met his future wife, Catherine, on the tour as well as she worked for US television. And together they moved to Uganda, where Alexander and Margot, of whom Paul was so very proud, enlarged the family. Everyone misses Paul Schoen at the Tour de France.